In this video, we will talk about reactive programming. We will talk about what is reactive programming, why reactive programming, and when we should do reactive programming. But before we jump to what, why, when, let's understand publisher subscriber model. In case of publisher subscriber model, we have a publisher we have a subscriber and this subscriber subscribes to publisher and whenever there is state change of data a data is emitted or in another word you can say whenever an event is triggered publisher notifies that to subscriber using notifies method now this subscriber is called observer and publisher is called observable because subscriber is observing some sets of data that is produced by publisher. Sometimes publisher is also called supplier. Now with respect to implementation of this publisher and subscriber, there are two models. First is called pull based and second is called push based. If we talk about pull based mechanism, in this case, whenever there is state change of data or event is triggered, publisher sends a notification to subscriber. On receive of this notification, subscribers send a request to the publisher for fetch of the data. So if you see subscriber is independent to fetch only required set of data that is being used by it it will not fetch all the data that has been changed in the publisher so there is one call of notification by publisher and another one is request sent by the subscriber to the publisher for fetch of data and if you look, whenever this operation happens, subscriber is blocked. It will not able to perform any operation. The common examples are iterator and JDK 8 streams that are based on pull based publisher subscriber model. Now, if we talk about push based mechanism, in this case, publisher sends whatever the data has been changed directly to observer or you can say subscriber. So all amount of data that is being changed is being sent to the subscriber and this subscriber has no other option than receiving the data. Although there is a one call but subscriber is bound to receive all the data sent by the publisher. If we talk about the common libraries that are based on push based publisher subscriber, first is RxJava, second is Project Reactor. Project Reactor is a very simple library and it is also used for reactive programming. RxJava is an old implementation that also provides reactive programming. And if you look at a bird eye view, you will find that this is a theoretical implementation of observer design pattern one of the important patterns in interviews now if we want to talk about the common examples where this observer design pattern is implemented then we would find that most of the ui and messaging based application in particular those which uses queue are based on observer design pattern for example, if you remember the old Java UI that is seen, it has event listeners. Event listeners are based on observer design pattern. Even the modern UI stack like Angular has observables and it is provided by RxJS library that is also a reactive library. In case of Java, you can implement this using JMS, you have AWS SQS and a combination of 
AWS SQS and AWS Lambda to demonstrate pull-based and push-based publisher subscriber model. Just like microservices, there is a lot of knowledge about it in the past few years. So if we talk about the definition of reactive programming, we would find that it is nothing but any form of data that could be converted to streams and operated in a synchronous and non-blocking manner. The two important term here is asynchronous and non-blocking. Most of the time when we do coding in Java, we do it in a synchronous way. We already know asynchronous is complex. It will give rise to callback hell and another important point with respect to interview. And here we are talking about asynchronous and non-blocking. So it will be a complex but it has certain advantages also. So if we say in simple terms what is reactive that means data as streams and a synchronous observers combination. Now let's talk about why reactive programming. Let's understand this through an example of stock trading platform. Now suppose you have a very much good stock that you are observing from last few weeks and suddenly the price of that stock goes down sharply. Now everyone would send a request to buy that stock. In terms of technical point, the number of transaction in that part of second is going to be a very very high. So how do we handle that? These questions, if you see, are mostly arise in a real-time based application or an application that you need a very responsive UI in terms of high load. We need a system, we need an architecture that can handle failures. Minimum request processing time should be there to process the data, to process the request. High load it should perform under high load. Minimum requirement of infrastructure. If the load increases, we are not going to spin off a new server which are going to take again a more fraction of time. So all these points are being handled by reactive programming. If we talk about handle failures, then reactive programming has name called resilient with respect to handle failures. It is responsive so it handles minimum request processing time and high load and minimal thread in terms of reactive programming it means it is elastic. Apart from this resilient, responsive and elastic point, one another important point is back pressure that reactive programming offers you. Now back pressure means if you remember the earlier publisher subscriber model, if publisher is publishing the data at a very high speed and subscriber is unable to consume it, then reactive programming gives you a way to handle it. So if you see with this point, you will find that reactive programming is suitable for complex projects and it could be a high yield and optimum cost with reactive programming. Now let's move ahead. If we talk about high volume of data transactions, if we talk about multi-user, if we talk about high responsive UI operation under heavy load, if we talk about real-time applications. For example of uh, high volume of data, you can say stock market is there, card system is there, Multi-user common example is gaming applications, high responsive UI operation under heavy load, let's say a brokerage platform like Zerodha or ICICI securities. And if you see the first three high volume of data multi-user and high responsive is an attribute of real-time applications only. So any real-time applications where these three things are present, 
just give a way of thinking to reactive programming and see how much difference does it create. If we talk about reactive programming libraries in Java, we would have JDK 9, we have flow class. In JDK 8, there is no reactive programming, so you would need a third party library, whether it is a project reactor library or some other library. We have Rx Java, we have a CUF framework, we have project reactor, and this project reactor is also the base of Spring WebFlux introduced in Spring 5. So we would have Spring WebFlux and Ratpack. Now, if we see reactive programming in Angular, the two important point is, first is observe method and another is subscribe method. The whole point of giving you the concept of reactive programming is because of these two methods that I will try to use whenever I do the microservice example of employee dashboard or student dashboard in the videos. So if you see this subscribe method, it is a part from RxJS library and it is called in service layer of the UI where backend service calls are made and on the receive of response you need to trigger some actions. In case of observe, it is called when we want to perform some operation whenever some change happened to the data that you are observing. So this was all about reactive programming concepts. Stay tuned and subscribe for more upcoming videos.